Okay, now we should be ready to do example four. Um, we're supposed to find all of these links. Now, thing number one, they did not mention whether or not this point uh, G was the circumcenter. But we should know if it's the circumcenter or not. Is point G the circumcenter of the triangle? Well, how do we build a circumcenter? We build the circumcenter by making perpendicular bisectors. Um, so look, look at line GE for a second that I've drawn here in pink. Is this a perpendicular bisector for segment BC? Hopefully you can see, yes, this is a perpendicular bisector. It's perpendicular, 90 degrees. It's a bisector. These two pieces are equal, so it goes right through the middle. So this pink line is a perpendicular bisector. Is this pink line, DG, is this a perpendicular bisector? Well, yes, it is. It is also perpendicular. It is also a bisector, cutting its side AB in half. What about this last one, FG? Is this a perpendicular bisector? And yes, once again, this is a perpendicular bisector. You see it's perpendicular, and it splits AC in half. Look at the markings. So, these pink lines are all perpendicular bisectors. So, when perpendicular bisectors meet, they do meet at the circumcenter. So that tells us that G is the circumcenter. Okay? So they don't have to tell us it's the circumcenter. If we see a bunch of perpendicular bisectors um, all coming together, then we know that it is the circumcenter. Now, what is the special property of a circumcenter? Let's see, can I look back? The special property of a circumcenter is it is equally distant to the vertices. That means from the circumcenter to each vertex, each corner of the triangle should be the same length. So let's apply this to example four here, if I can find it. Okay, so if this is the circumcenter, and we've just decided that it is, then it should be equally distant to the vertices. So the distance from G to A should be the same as the distance from G to B. It should be the same as the distance from G to C. That is the special property of the circumcenter. It is equally distant to the vertices, the corners. So all these three red lines should be equal. Um, that means right now you should be t able to tell me the length of segment GC. Because if I know one of these three, I should know all of them. So how long is GC, you guys? Hopefully you were saying that GC was going to be 15. How did I know that? Because of this. AG is 15, so that means all of them are 15. That means BG is also 15. All right, the distance to the vertices should be all the same. So that gives me three right there. Um, now, so let's mark what, what do I have. Okay, GC is 15. That's this one. So this is 15. Okay, GB, did they ask me that? Yeah, that's right here. This is also 15. Okay, now to find anything else, we're going to have to use the Pythagorean theorem. Okay, all over the place, we can use the Pythagorean theorem to solve these problems. For example, um, say if I want to find AF, which is coming up right here, AF. AF is down here, but I want you to focus on the triangle that I'm about to color in blue right now. It's a very slow moving triangle. Let me move it up. Okay, look at this triangle right here. 
I should be able to do the Pythagorean theorem, shouldn't I? <clears throat> so looking at this blue triangle, notice that we have two sides of, the, of this triangle given. Notice that it's a right triangle. You can tell because of the box right here. So we have a right triangle. We have two sides given. Um, so we should be able to find the third side, which is AF. Um, so let's do that. Just to make it easier to see, whoops, I moved the wrong thing. Just to make it easier to see, I'm going to move this blue triangle off to the side. But if you can follow this with me now, um, the hypotenuse, like right here, see, so this is my 90 degree angle. This hypotenuse was 15. Um, this leg over here was your 6 that you see right there. All right, see where all these things are coming from? And your AF. Okay, I'll just call that X for right now. So do you see how it all matches? The 6, the 15, AF is X. So if I solve this for X, then I'm finding AF, Pythagorean theorem. So A squared plus B squared equals C squared. So I'm just going to go X squared plus 6 squared equals 15 squared. So that's going to be X squared plus 36 equals 225. Then I'm just going to subtract 36 from both sides. So that's going to give me x squared equals 189. Um, so now if I just take the square root of both sides, square root, square root, my TI-30 excess multi-view is going to give me 3 radical 21. So that is AF. So I can just put 3 square root 21 just like that. Um, what else are they asking me for? Um, let's see. Let's see. We need CB Okay, CB, we should know that right now. That shouldn't take any work, so let's get that out of the way. If, um, if uh, the distance from B to E is 12, guess what the distance from B to C is going to be? Hopefully, you were thinking 24. E is the midpoint. So if this is 12, then that means this over here has to be 12. So t the total here has got to be 24. So CB should be 24. So that just leaves EC. Oh, that's just, okay. EC is also 12 for the same reason um, we just talked about. Midpoint, 12, 12. EC is 12. Okay. So we had to do a little Pythagorean theorem. We had to recognize the property of a circumcenter. It's going to be equally distant to the vertices. That's how we got these 15s. Midpoint, that's how you do that. So that's example four.